Okay. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jason Tucker. This is episode number 117, Imagine Client Expectations. Let's go around the room real quick and get everyone introduced. We're going to... Man, we got a jackal of Chris's. All right, Chris. First Chris here. Chris Connery, tell me about yourself. Uh, Chris Connery, postmodernsales.com, uh, startup veteran, uh, lots of WordPress, work at full contact now, helping solve the uh, address book problem. Very cool. The address book problem. Say needs that is, needs that fixed. All right. Everybody needs it fixed. Yeah, finding the app is so hard on my phone. Chris Wigman, tell us about yourself. <laughs> yes, carry on, carry on. Chris Wigman, I'm a developer with iThemes.com. Uh, been around a bunch of agencies over the last few years as well and worked on both sides of the fence there. Very cool. How about you, Dave? I'm Dave of Spectrum Tech. Uh, we build e-commerce plugins and custom plugins and all kinds of fun stuff. How about you, George? I'm George Stefanis. I am the team lead for Jetpack, and I would just like to say how much I really appreciate that we are um, participating in the airing of grievances here on this Festivus Eve. <laughs> <laughs> when are the feats of strength? Uh, coming up. <laughs> I want to do that. Speaking of strong, what about you, Jeff? Oh, nice. Thanks for that answer, <laughs> man. My name is Jeff Zinn. I am one half of Pixel Jar. The other half being Brandon, who is awesome. Uh, I help do the Orange County Work Camp, but we no longer lead it because we have a great leader for this year, so that's very exciting. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. We'll leave it at that. Your face is a pixel jar. What about you, Cream? I don't, I don't know. I just love the name of your company. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, just I'm Cream Murray. <laughs> Mom likes the name of my company. Crab favorite. Very nice. Good, good to see you here, Cream. How about you, Sarah? I'm Sarah. I'm the production manager at Zeke. Miss Say Reed. Zeke, baby, Zeke, baby. Uh, hey, I'm Say Reed. I don't work for Zeke. Um, I, I work for me. <laughs> and I do WordPress stuff and at Say Reed Media. Steve? Very nice. What about you, Steve? And he's muted. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's, no. He's been doing this a few days. Oh, His no. name's Steve Zangit. And uh, he is the CTO at Zeke Interactive, and um, I don't remember what else he does. Yeah. I kind of tune out usually. He's back. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch I of meetups in place. I'm Steve Zingan. I'm the founder of Zeke Interactive, and I lead the OC WordPress meetup. Nice. That's I'm it. Jason Tucker. You can find me, Jason Tucker, on Twitter, and I blog over at WPmedia.pro. So, grievances. Let's make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Happy change. So um, I gave a talk at uh, WordCamp Vegas uh, last weekend, and um, the talk was managing client expectations. Wait, wait, hold on, Steve. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Are we okay talking about this? No, what happens in Vegas ends up on Instagram. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. In Steve's case, what happens in Vegas gets incorporated into the company charter. So that's just <laughs> right. kind of... What's happening over there? So, so I gave I gave this talk at WordCamp Vegas, and I put up ten rules for managing client expectations, and I have them here, and I thought we'd go over them and discuss them here on the water cooler. How's Is that, that like the rules, like that book that one time? Is it like that kind of rules? It's just like that, Seth. It's like ten simple rules for dating my teenage daughter. Remember <laughs> <laughs> that show? No? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I think we're like all too all. old to be dating any teenage daughters. <laughs> True story. What's your number one, Steve? Number one. Let's just go down your and list. And we're probably going to spend our whole time right here. So number one is the client is always right. No. Wrong. Even no. when they are wrong. No. I'm going to cut you off right there. We're not going to no. spend our entire time on this. And here's why. Uh -huh. if, the client was always right, me? Okay. if the client was always right, they wouldn't need to hire us. Bingo. Okay, That's not on true. There's, a, the there's a difference between saving Moving and on. And <laughs> There's a difference between saying the client is always, always right and the client always knows what to do. Those are different things. Oh. Different words. No, no, the client does not always no, know what to do either. Right either way. Client's always right. The no. client's right if the client is paying the bills, but you have to define what right means. The does right mean that they get what right. they want? <laughs> or does that mean no that they are the, correct, the, that a slider like, is a good like use for of example, space? For example, which, I mean, this, this of course would never happen, but let's say a client calls me very upset about the way that something's being handled and they feel like it, they're just not getting what they're, what they're supposed to be getting. It, it's kind of like improv. You always say yes and. That's fair. 
Yes, and yeah, but that doesn't mean they're always right. Yeah, no, that so doesn't mean they are wrong. wrong. Right. I, I, I agree with Sarah. The yes and is a really huge thing to go with. The, the yes and is a huge thing. I actually talk a lot in the stuff I write about how improv is probably the most underutilized sales skill, uh, uh-huh. being able to kind of wing things on the fly. Um, and saying yes and is a huge part of that. But the client is very rarely right. And much like George was saying, they hired us because we're the experts. And they did. So you, your object when saying yes and is, yes, I totally see why you see that. And here's why this is why we're doing it the other way. Because this is what we've done in the past over and over and over again. Yeah. You give them the, the reason to believe they might be right, but then you have to show them why they're not. Chris, yeah. that approach yeah. is exactly yeah, the reason that I think that, that, them to smithereens. <laughs> that there is so much animosity a lot of times, you know, and often I'm seeing the other end, the client end that's dealing with the web developer, and I think that it's that attitude, what you just said, that the client isn't right, and, and that general consensus is the problem. There's a super, like, I'm so smart, I know everything problem that happens with web development, and you're like, the client doesn't know what they're talking about, they haven't read the studies. What the client is right about and, and what we don't often acknowledge enough is the client is right about their business. The client knows what their objectives are. And it's our responsibility as the developer to figure out what those objectives are and align the project with the business objectives. It's not about who's right or who's wrong. It's a comprehensive project. No, but, so let, let me just, let me just say, in no way, shape, or form was I saying that I'm always right. In fact, I'm usually no. wrong as well. No, because what you were saying... You were being flippant, and that's hang excusable. No, uh, what no, 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 no. Let's take a look at what that whole number eight, all right? I love this. Why the client's not doing right now. What is anyone saying? No, what is my house at Thanksgiving? What Chris was saying, and this is very important, is that you have to educate the client. You don't say that you're right. Like, no, you're wrong, I'm right, and here's why I'm right. You're saying, I hear what you're saying, this is an alternative, and this is why this is an alternative is important and probably a better option. Yeah, you can make recommendations. Often you, the, often you can get the client to agree, like, yes, this is the right thing to do. And that falls into two categories. Thing. Go that ahead, Chris. falls into two categories. You're either talking about money or schedule. So if you start with, as Sarah said, the client is always right and this is how it's going to affect money or this is how it's going to affect schedule, then you bring in Say's point about their business you'll always find consensus because they won't want to spend time or money or they'll decide that the business is more important. That's so true. Act and as if of, they're always right. And part of what I said in Vegas and part why, why I have this rule is I, I really want um, my team and everybody in the community to change their frame of thinking. It's it, This is not an adversarial relationship. right? This, yes. is, this, is, this is a team effort. Yes. So I like what Jeff said. There is no right or wrong. Right, you 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 see, it's like uh, uh, in the movie they say, eh, right, wrong. I'm the guy with the gun. The client's the one with the checkbook, so they're gonna be the one setting the goals. You just need to help them understand the best way to get to those goals. So yeah, you can make other recommendations and tell them why something may or may not be a good idea, but it's really up to them to make that final decision, and then your job is to carry that out. Well, and, and a line of really used to help with that is say, hey, look, here's why I wouldn't do it that way because of this, this, and this that I've done in the past. But ultimately, exactly. it's your money, and if that's how you want to do it, by all means. But this yeah, is why I wouldn't do it that way. So there's also another aspect to that, which you just said wrong. about... They chose the wrong this person. Is how <laughs> Chris, you just made another point about how you say, this is how I've done it in the past. I think, again, it really does happen a lot that just because you did it a certain way in the past doesn't mean that this business and these business objectives are the same as they were. And I think that it, a lot of times it does become, I know better because I'm the developer and so this is how it should be, when it's not a matter of collaborating with the client on the business objectives. So I think the whole, the whole framing of that question is really wrong. And what Steve is saying about that this is a team effort for that everyone should stop being like, well, they're wrong and, you know, and antagonizing each other and be like, how can we meet the business objectives while implementing the most effective and efficient technology solution? That, then no one's wrong, no one's right. It's just a matter of how to best achieve those objectives. Right. You make it a collaborative effort instead of an average thing and you win. Rule number two. <laughs> You're going to keep us moving. <laughs> Only yeah. 10 minutes on the first one. All right. Email. Another three hours. Rule Did number it. two. Rule number two. Email is the worst form of communication. Second worst, texting. I would switch no. those, but close enough. <laughs> but I mean, do you really text form. business relationships? Absolutely. Business? Oh, yeah. uh, my, clients, oh, yeah. my clients text me. Call me, happy face. 
<laughs> Lots of emoji <laughs> in my class. Emojis, best sure. point of communication. Yeah. Yeah. Emoji yeah. business set. There is that business fish sticker set now on Facebook, so I mean, I, business I, communication I, I, is now easy. So, so, so what's the what? problem with email and texting? Yeah. So well, the, the problem with email and texting is they're all intrinsically one to a certain set of people, and they're not in a central place where future people coming onto the team can look and see the previous justification for decisions. So that's they're email not thread. logged easily. And that's email, part of it. But thread no, thread I have to thread. forward every email and every yes. thread to the new person. And, that's oh, project that's tracking, though. George, that's project I tracking hate, and yeah. that type of thing, as opposed so to communication, communication, which is what Steve's talking about. Communication is part of project that, tracking. You lose tone, you lose body language, you use context when you don't have high fidelity conversation. I've That's always big. told my people that the, you aim for the highest fidelity conversation possible. Get in person if you can, get video if you can't, get phone if you have to, email is the last resort. That's why I, I always say aim for the highest fidelity I can get to. What, a, what about email as a backup to the communication though? Definitely. Just documentation. Definitely. Always, you always it, yes. Email. Oh yeah, I always do yeah. follow up emails, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's where it's handed. And not the communication, but the, the backup and the documentation. So, Chris, I love what you said. You know, when you read an email, it's up to you to interpret what the, what the feelings and emotion are behind the text. And it, it, there's a lot of assuming that happens there. I mean, not with emoji, though. That's obviously very clear. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, well obviously. the exception. <laughs> unless, unless you put the wind the at the end of it. <laughs> All right, let's do three. All right, number three, don't react. Just what? Chill. No, what are you saying, man? Come on. <laughs> be cool. Be cool. cool. <laughs> Good reactions, bad reactions, they're all reactions. Don't react. Anybody, anybody want to comment can before you, I talk can, about this? Can this one as a human not react? Do you mean don't like visibly react? Don't respond within the first 30 seconds? I mean, you're going to have a reaction. It's oh, not like... Saying, saying, we're saying, saying not react. Don't be the first to speak. Don't be the first to speak. Think before you speak. Absolutely. And think before you act as well. Don't just like, oh, I'm going to go fix this on the website. Like, think about it. Make sure you're actually doing a right to the solution. Don't take the website down. Because that happens on a reaction a lot. Do not you cowboy code. code. Wait, don't take the website don't down. Cowboy code. Code. That's correct. Do not cowboy code. <laughs> the the unsent <laughs> female labs app is probably the best thing in the world. And no matter what happens, do not get defensive because then the client is going to come after you even further. Yeah. So also you need to sound point. from a centered place in any, any time you talk to them. Because if you're ever defensive, that is then putting the two of you in an adversarial relationship, and we're back to number one again. Exactly. Yeah. And they're so going to assume I, you did something wrong. One of my tricks when I get a when I get an email that might be angry or heated is I'll write the email or I'll write the reaction I want to write. But the first thing I do is I hit reply and I take them out of the two field. Yes. I write it. <laughs> no. And then I delete it. That is too dangerous. Don't do it in a do it in a Word doc if you have to. That's Don't fine. put it in a Word right doc. Why you take them out of the two field? No, no, no. Because you might forget something might happen. That still could get to the point if you make a mistake. I, I think so this is Jeff. Uh, right on paper. Jeff speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> this is all of us. We've all done this. Yeah, I know we've all done this. Mistake, right. Another I only get those emails at two o'clock in the morning from Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Another. We've learned anything from the Sony hack. Hey, um, yeah, another, I think that Mel is going to get read into a deposition. Another, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Actually, that's another, a great point. Another trick is just get up from your desk and go take a walk. Walk around the building, walk around the office, just yeah. cool off. Right? I would just take like to minutes, point take out ten minutes. that all of these tips are tips that everyone should also be incorporating into their interpersonal relationships in general. Life? They sound like great, <laughs> great relationship tips, and the fact that Steve is the one giving us this is like, just really interesting to me. Are those your mind? That's all I'm saying. I just find it pretty interesting. Thank wow. you. Who's reading the number four? Right. Number, number four. four. Shut up and listen. Wait. <laughs> We're not doing a poor job of that today. Let me tell you. What? Who? I win. I don't know. I think Chris Weichmann's been doing a fantastic job of shutting up and listening to the rest of the class yes. later on. She's standing up and silently judging is what's happening over there. Great, <clears throat> right, Chris. Uh, Something like that. Anybody want to talk about that? <laughs> this, this one's easy. You have two ears and one mouth. Use them proportionally. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. It's, it's nine. Unless so like there's that. ten people in the chat, then about, one to nine parts. I'm right. about so water to uh, the exception. tweet all of your significant others and see how just how well this gets implemented <laughs> throughout one's life. Or is this really just isolated into business? You guys sound very enlightened. That's all I'm saying. Oh, no, my wife will disagree. I don't do this at all at home, so no. <laughs> All right, number five. Take ownership hey, of the situation. Hey, he just did that. He just took ownership. Jay, 
Shout out to Melissa. So cute. <laughs> oh, right. I should do number four. <laughs> Take ownership. Number four. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about this. So this oh, is yeah. a nice corollary number one, is uh-huh. when, when you do make mistakes, and it's not an if, it's a when, because we all do it, admit it. Say, look, hey, I screwed up, or this happened, or this thing was totally unexpected. Here's what we're doing to take control of it right now. But I think it's, it goes along with the number one, which is when there are problems, it's not the client's fault. Absolutely. Right. And You're I, the expert. I, I extend this into even situations that may be outside of your control. Oh, yeah. You take ownership of those things. You're, you're hired to do something. And even though they might not be something that you were responsible for or something that you caused, go and take ownership and figure that out. It goes a long way. Yeah. When the client hits the upgrade button and brings the site down, <laughs> it's your problem. Absolutely. You block the upgrade button. <laughs> well, you could do that, uh, but it's still your problem. Or when they forget to pay their hosting bill or, or whatever. I mean, these, these are all things that have happened to me and clients in the past. The domain domain registration expires. Happen. The That's story the I certificate told, expires. Yeah, the story I told at, at WordCamp Vegas was uh, we had a political site go down uh, on the day of the midterm elections. Down, it was down all day. Good. Right. The reason it was down is the uh, there was a DNS bill that wasn't paid, $12. Oh, jeez. Wow. Okay. Nice. Now, the DNS company had sent several emails. They tried to contact everyone, and they just they went to a spam folder. So it was nobody's specific fault. But when the client called me, I took ownership of that situation. I saw it through. Simple as that. Yeah, and that's an important point, too, is you're saying you're taking ownership of the situation, not necessarily the issue or the problem. No, no, no. Not, it's not, not blame. Yeah. Just ownership. Right. Yeah. Which, again, I think, I think blame is, uh, and this goes back to a lot of the points, is blame is just a very dangerous thing in general. Yes. Don't be, again, like... Uh, Kareem said, you know, don't be defensive because, again, that's when blame starts getting right. kind of thrown out, fingers get pointed. Again, just take the situation, like, here's the situation, here's how we're going to solve it. That's really what the client wants to hear. Matter of fact, very matter of factly. Right. Right. Yeah. Everyone is much more interested in getting the situation resolved than finding out who to scream at. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> figure out who to scream at and, later. And, and one yeah. of the ways I say that is, is, hey, I'll tell you what, let's go solve this right now. Later on, we can do a postmortem. Once the, situ- yeah. once the dust settles, we'll do a postmortem. We'll figure out how to, sol- how to prevent this in the future. Right now, I really want to focus in and fix this situation. Matter right, of but fact. Backing up, but backing up what Jeff said also, don't, don't also try to say it's somebody else's problem. If you're trying to get, Never. get rid of Never. it, yeah. just let's solve it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, where are we at? Seven. Number six? Seven. Oh, six. Seven, oh, six. Uh, six. Math six. is hard. Six. You, you, know, you made a big assumption there. I did. Number six <laughs> is don't assume. Nice. Did you like that? It was a little kind I of I see, see what you did there. I see what you did there. Yeah, that's good. Right. Don't make assumptions. <clears throat> Agreed. Right, so so here's, the st- here's, the story. <laughs> here's the story I told at, uh, at WordCamp Vegas. I got an email that said, we need to talk immediately. What does that mean? Everyone's going to panic on that email, though. Again, that was me, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk immediately. My, my, my gut reaction is, oh, shit, I'm in trouble. Right? That's not what the email was at all. It, the email was about new business. We got, they were excited that we got a new project, but it was, we need to talk immediately, exclamation point. Oh, that goes back to number two. Email was bad communication. You read tone into that because you felt and guilty <laughs> about what you knew you did. Well, I, and, and I reacted. That's right. Oh, man, yeah. you broke all your points. Well, this is number, number 10. This is number 10. This way you don't over communicate. Right? You these, can always <laughs> talk more. These are, these are, these are rules. I'm going to have reactions. I'm going to have assumptions, but it's how you handle them that makes the difference. They're, they're, execution is what matters. Anyway, anybody have anything else to add on Don't Assume? We're moving along. All right, number seven, keep your promises. So, so this one's great. We're talking on this whole episode's topic is managing client expectations. If they don't understand the expectations that you're putting out there for you, and you don't keep to those, they're never going to keep to theirs. Oh yeah. Also, be very yes. careful what you promise. And, also, and, and that's and and George, that's a great point. So if you don't promise anything, there's no promises to keep. No, but then that's too vague, and then, oh. then the are wondering when things are going to happen. <laughs> oh. And then you go, oh, I don't know, man. That's cool. And you can't be you that way about it. Especially don't want to re- over, uh, don't react. And then we have agile web development. That's no, important. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I mean, no. honestly, this is this is the, the number one rule of customer service of any type, whether it's web developers like ourselves, anyone dealing with clients, even down to retail. I mean, I had a, a terrible experience with an online retailer trying to buy Chris's presents, and got basically told one thing and another thing happened, and uh, they're not going to get another penny of my money, and the same will be true of your clients. Now, what I was saying to George, I was kind of half joking and half not. If you don't, if you don't overpromise, um, then you don't get yourself into trouble. 
right? So mm -hmm. I'm not talking about an SOW. SOW, your statement of work has certain things in there that you're going to deliver. Those are deliverables. What I'm talking about is promises. So if you're having a conversation with a client and you promise something, make sure you follow up on that. Oh yeah, that's a quick fix. It'll take no more than 10 minutes that's and it's it. like a complete database rework and it's, just, <laughs> it's, it's a nightmare. Those are the promises I'm talking about. No, but again, that goes to like the communication too. As soon as you realize like that's a bigger issue than you think it is, that's when you have to communicate with them again and say, look, I know this is what I said before. I looked into it. It's actually this other thing. It's going to take all this other stuff. And again, I know that goes into over-communicating and honesty is the best policy too. So I yeah. apologize for running forward. Oh, yeah, we have that's a cameo. Okay. So, and, and, right. and honestly, one of the things that's really big here, if you're working on a team of more than just yourself, like if you're working on a, a 2, 3, 10, 20 person team, don't make promises that someone else is going to do the work. Because easy is a word used for someone else's job. You can always say, oh yeah, this should be an easy thing, and then your developer goes, yeah, no, that's, that's a week and a half. That phrase is something you need to take out of your vocabulary right now. What everybody, watching, everybody watching the water cooler, take that yeah. out of your vocabulary. Never say easy. Oh, that's easy to take out of my vocabulary. No, no. <laughs> take, take one out of your vocabulary. Yeah, that, that'll be easy. Or the, the word easy, it's an easy fix that's simple to do, that should be quick. Take that out of your vocabulary. I actually removed it, that from an email this morning. I was like, do, 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 do. no, no, it's actually not. No, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. <laughs> that's true. Um, and yeah. the thing about promises, you, I just want to reiterate something you just said is, Look, we're human. We're going to make mistakes, and we're going to miss deadlines, and things are going to happen. So we may make a promise, but I think Jeff said it. Make sure you follow up and say, "Hey, I made you this promise. This happened. Here's here's what we're doing about it." So, Steve, are you which, sure is perfect, which is the perfect segue into number eight, which is tell your client that you aren't perfect. Tell your client that you aren't perfect. I tell my client right up front when we get into a new new engagement, "Hey, we're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes, and we're going to discover things as we go." That's oh, yeah. setting an expectation. Are you seriously? Are you like gonna be like a relationship coach or something? <laughs> it's like, like, what is it? I think so I, I think I found a new business for myself. Right up front. Yeah. Well, I guess when Chris Lem is not in, Steve has to step up. Uh, <laughs> no, I meant not what? I don't know. I that just got weird. <laughs> what, what, stuff, like, what is? Know. Is Chris giving you relationship advice? One of one of the things that I always can really? know is that is I is I let <laughs> I let I let my clients know that there are going to be unexpected, right? There's going to be things that we just don't know uh, that are going to happen on this project. Yeah, their business and people that's normal. They should understand that. Yeah, clients always, always come know up that you're not perfect. Children never. <laughs> I do have a guest today. Number nine, honesty is the best policy. Yes. Mm. Lie. You lie. Yeah, Jeff Turner and I talked about this at WordCamp LA, and he, he kind of called me on it saying, no, I don't think that's the case. And then my point was it's not it's not that you have to tell a client everything. Like I was, you know, I got a flat tire, I got lost, and then went with a wild pack of hobos and ran around for a couple of weeks. <laughs> that's <laughs> you lost like me at the hobos. Tuesday. And that's There's why it wasn't flat. delivered on time. <laughs> there was unforeseen <laughs> circumstances. It was not delivered on time. Here, But again, going back to the point that we all keep saying is that always kind of have, a, like, yes, this was the mistake, it was my fault, whatever it might be, but here's the plan going forward, here's the solution to fix whatever that was. And again, that's what the client really wants, is to know it's going to get done. Well, it, 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 it also ties into the, to the take ownership thing. It's, you know, yeah, it be honest, don't make excuses. Yeah. Let's say, hey, this is what happened. I mean, this is, uh, there's a, a victim and uh, victim cycle you can easily fall into. Where you can make excuses, it wasn't my fault, I had no idea about this DNS thing you know, whatever, or you can say, hey, I'm going to take ownership of it, here's what we're going to do to fix it, let's make sure it doesn't happen again next time. Right. And do that as soon as you know, right? So don't linger on that. Yes, <laughs> don't sit on those so grenades. It's <laughs> not also just in an after effect, oh, I did something wrong, I'm going to be honest about it. It's also up front when you're proposing a client or even in your, you know, when you're going after business, I see a lot of this where web developers are like, sure, I can totally do that. So that kind of falls under the, you know, prompt, don't make promises too. But um, yeah, people are un dishonest about what they can actually do and they just assume that they can go forward and hire someone out. Um, and sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. But either way, it is dishonest to say that you can do something for a client that you can't. Um, and I know that that gets talked about, oh, just, you know, Google it later and yes, say yes and say you can do it and, you know, but um, that's creating a dishonest relationship and uh, putting yourself on the hook and putting your client's business um, in jeopardy. And I think, uh, 
Magento. Oh, that's easy. I'll figure that out. <laughs> you have three rules in one statement. Oh, man. wow. But I think Chris yeah, made so, a good point too. That um, the other thing about that too is being quick about that honesty too. So again, if you if you say this is going to be done in three weeks, and then a day later you realize that's going to be six weeks, not three. Tell them right away and set that expectation. Don't wait three weeks and then tell them, like, oh, yeah, it wasn't going to be due today the day I said. Instead, it's going to be three weeks from now. That will be – it's a tough conversation to have that first time, but it's a better result in the long run. Well, take, and, take, and a nice result of that is clients don't mind things going long or going over budget. They hate it when it's a surprise. Right. Yes. Right. right. I think, I think, in, general, I think in general clients hate surprises, period. Yeah. Which brings, uh, me, which brings me to number ten. Uh-huh. <laughs> you cannot over-communicate. Nice what? segue. Good a job. Lot of, a lot of project managers will think that, hey, I documented, I sent an email. They've been told. We are constantly retraining project managers, and we are constantly telling people, write an email, do whatever you want to do, but have those n- regular conversations. Have those regular meetings. Even if you don't need it, jump on video, go down and see them, have that phone call and talk over the project because things will come up. The more you communicate, the more things will bubble up. That being said, if two-thirds of your billable time is just for a conversation, uh, you might want to reevaluate how much you're putting into just the conversation and put more into the work. But, yes. So it's putting, Actually, putting my business hat on for a minute. And to, to add to what Kareem said is those conversations will lead to more sales. Yeah. Yes. Dang yes, in. and You're building a relationship. thirds of your time is going towards a conversation. Maybe that client needs it, and maybe you need to be billing for that time too. Right. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, they're buying that. your expertise. They're not buying your hour. You're not buying your time in front of the keyboard. They're buying your knowledge and your expertise to do whatever it is you're solving for them. Yeah. yeah. The other thing too is they they hire you to do a service because they don't want to do it. So when you are talking to them, there's a good chance they're either multitasking or they've got you've got 25 percent of their attention. So you may tell them, hey. Uh, again, I said three weeks is going to be six. They may or may not hear you. So again, over communicate. Keep repeating. Remember when I told you six weeks instead of three? Every time you talk to them. And again, that goes to Kareem talking about project managers constantly well, and, uh, having these conversations. I, I like Kareem's idea of having a, a regular meeting. One of the things I've always tried to set up with my teams is let's schedule a regular weekly ten minute check in or bi weekly twenty minute check in. Something where I know that every so often I'm going to have a conversation with you. So that worst case scenario, the longest I go without talking to you is a, a week two weeks, whatever it is, so that those conversations do bubble up, so that those surprises don't happen. Yeah, that's something we do uh, for longer-term projects. We give a weekly status report. Every Friday, they'll get something saying what we've done, what our next steps are going to be. That kind of communication keeps you in their mind, as well as letting them know how things are progressing. And it's a good opportunity to bring up problems if you do hit a road bump. So to conclude, to, to wrap this all up, don't be George Costanza. Oh wait. <laughs> no. wait, 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 I got that wrong, George. Happy, now? happy <laughs> Festivus, everybody. Happy Festivus, everybody. Are we, are we, are we um, airing the grievances? Oh, we are. Yeah, one minute. <laughs> it's the feats of strength. <laughs> My coffee budget is just really not up to par. <laughs> Raise your rates, say. Raise your rates. That's my, that's my, that's my thing. Jason, you hear that? George yep. wants a raise. George wants a raise. George wants a raise. For, for his participation in the cooler. Hey, George, I, I demand you double the nothing you pay me for appearing George, on this I'm, I'll, George, I'll triple it. You're doing a great job. I want a refund. Look, we <laughs> let you talk about Jetpack every single episode, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Those two seconds when I say I'm team lead. Beautiful. <laughs> I just want to point out that I noticed Say has written number four on her whiteboard behind her. Well, yeah, not only do I have number four right there, I also have a, a thing right here. I'm big into trying to remember. Yeah, I, I can't see what you're pointing at, though. Oh, it says listen. I forget, I forget to remember all the time. It says listen. Listening is really important. No, and, um, hey, listen. What? Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Sometimes when you're trying to solve problems so actively, you can't, you, you, uh, you know, you forget that you have to listen for all the data. So you got to input all the data, and then solve the problem. This is something I've learned. Shut up and listen. That's good. Yeah. Like <laughs> Phoebe, say 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 happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. That's about it for today. Make sure you go to the website wpwatercooler.com and click on the links there. There is a subscribe button on there, so make sure you hit <laughs> the subscribe button. <laughs> Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell. Oh, it's like it's coming right at me. 
<laughs> I know, it's one of those new features of YouTube. So make sure you go to the website, click on those things, click on the little thumbs up button. Click. If you subscribe, don't want to listen click. to... Uh, don't want to listen, watch us, but listen to us, you can also subscribe what? on iTunes. Or leave a question in the comments below. Listen oh. to your face! That's about <laughs> it, guys. See y'all later. Bye. Hey, y'all.